Dr. Amanda. If you're on YouTube and you're watching through the video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm very excited. I have a guest, Edie Houghton, with me, and we are going to be talking about transformational leadership. Now, Edie is an author and speaker among so many talents, even editor, I would say, in some ways, since she's <laughs> my own information. I'm really excited, Edie, to have you on this podcast and on the show. So welcome. Thanks. And I'm excited to hear all about your journey with transformational leadership. So we will begin. And so my first question for you is, how would you describe, you know, transformational leadership? Well, I think that uh, transformational leadership is leadership that actually shows us how to become who it is we've always wanted to be, as well as who it is that the Lord always made us to be. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it occurs when we're actually able to upgrade our mindset, because all of our actions actually start out as thoughts. What we need to do is we need to learn how to take all of our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then we can defeat those notions, which are actually negative thoughts that are not going to um, contribute to his kingdom mm -hmm. and where it is that he's leading us to. And then we can cast them down. And in order to do that, we can, what I call use scriptural throwing stars. Mm -hmm. And that's when we take like a piece of scripture and we defeat a negative thought with it. Mm -hmm. So, such as I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, or Christ in me is the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we can actually change the way we are behaving. So, a good example would be if you have a bad habit, a lot of times the more we focus on a bad habit, the more we're drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And we're giving, because the things that we give attention to are what we empower in our lives. So if instead of thinking about not doing something, if instead we launch scripture at it, then we can defeat it because God's word never goes forth without accomplishing that for which it was intended. Mm -hmm. so, so really, you know, talking about those thoughts being powerful, right? And it can totally change our entire behaviors or actions based on how yeah. we think about it. Yeah, well, it, you know, and the Bible tells us that the way it says it is interesting. It says that power of death mm. and life are in the tongue. Mm. I always thought power of life and death, but it's power of death and life. And so mm. once, you know, once we're born again, we don't want to step back into those old habits because those old habits were really leading us towards death. Yeah, absolutely. So. That's good. I know you talked about some of that transformational, you know, leadership or perhaps even how you transform from it. And some of what it means to you, I'm not sure if there's anything else that you wanted to hit on in terms of how important you think transformational leadership is. Well, I think it's, it's really important because if, if we don't gear ourselves towards actively discipling others and helping them become the best they can be and pulling out the gold that God placed in them, mm -hmm. then we're not fulfilling what Jesus asked us to. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, disciple nations. He didn't say, just get people saved. He said, disciple nations. Yeah. And, and so if we don't share the, um, the strategies that God gave us, that got us through things, mm -hmm. then we're not going to overcome because the promise is Revelation 12, 11, they overcame by the blood of the lamb. That's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. The word of their testimony, that's Jesus alive in my life. Mm -hmm. and not loving my life unto death because before I got reborn my spirit man was just slowly dying mm -hmm. and the wages of sin is death and so until you get reborn and start to actually renew your mind mm -hmm. by washing it with the word and by by learning who it is that God says you are and by learning what it is he says you can do and how you can overcome then you know you're you're still stuck in that same place right. there, I, I i feel like there's a lot of people without intending to they think that they can just add god to their current life that's mm -hmm. i don't think gonna work out that well and i think that it's shortchanging the fullness of what jesus really accomplished for us mm -hmm. 
because he's not an add-on. He's like the upgrade of a lifetime. Yeah. You know? So I, I get really kind of carried away, but. <laughs> no, it's good. I mean, I think, you know, sometimes maybe there are some people in the audience that have never really understood that, you know, and, and you know, you're talking about transformational leadership and you're talking about, you know, like applying some scriptures and you're also talking about some really important things about, you know, living that out versus, you know, really allowing Jesus to basically have that relationship. And there may be some people listening that, you know, don't really have Jesus, you know, like he is sort of an add on, right. And again, that's maybe where they're at. And there may be some viewers that are, you know, hesitant. They may not even know who Jesus is, you know, so hopefully yeah. we're going through here that might touch them and they might get a different perspective about what your journey was, you know, and what this looks like. Yeah. And, and just to be fair, you know, like I, I, I feel like I felt like I always knew God existed and I always knew Jesus was real and I knew the Holy Spirit was there. Wasn't really sure what to do with the Holy Spirit, right. but I knew that, you know, I believed all three members of the Godhead existed. Yeah. However, I, you know, was just that, just a believer for many, many, many years. And then I, you know, I came back into agreement with God and his plan in my life. And, you know, quite basically my life had gotten to a place where it just wasn't working for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes desperation can be a catalyst for change. Yeah. And so um, because of that, I started pursuing Jesus with all my heart and, and, and I, you know, I wouldn't say it was me on any front. I would say it was Jesus honoring the fact that I'd asked him into my life when I was 11 yeah. and I just hadn't really let him fully in. Right. And so, you know, and, and I know that one of the things that I, I feel um, we're not doing that great yet is we're not really teaching people in a practical way just yet. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times when people go to church every Sunday for however many Sundays and they're doing the best they can do, Right. you know, but they haven't really gotten any hands-on training and discipleship that actually makes the Bible real to them today. Yeah. You know, like, and, and yeah. that's, that's really a crying shame, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that encounter, you know, and just understanding what is relationship, what does it look like, and who is God, right? And there's so many dimensions of God, but like learning that there's something, you know, other than just not experiencing it or even encountering him, you know, in that way. Yeah. Power. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just that good that he will continue to pursue us. Yeah. You know, because if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. The word testimony splits apart into two words, and it's that which he did, he wants to do again. So when I share my testimony, that's um, the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19.10. Mm -hmm. And so that, <coughs> excuse me, that's a promise from God. Yeah. You know, so that's why when we share the testimony of what God did for us, it offers hope to the next person because they're like, well, if he did it for her, maybe he'll do it for me too, you know? And, mm -hmm. and that is how good God is. Absolutely. You know, he wants all of his children to come into the fullness of what Jesus accomplished for them, as well as to become the people that he made them us to be, because he's got a plan. Yeah. You know, it's much bigger than we think, you know, for, you know, his, yep. an incredible plan. So yeah, that's good. So how about transformational leadership? What are ways you've experienced transformational leadership shift in environment? There's two really great examples that I can think of. Um, and the first one is actually what I was just talking about, how to pull the Bible into today. Because mm -hmm. it's not just a history book. It's actually really, really a great resource for today. And so one, um, one way to do that is to actually use scripture to defeat a negative habit. So a good example that I can give out of my own life was I was, um, I smoked cigarettes and I was stuck and I couldn't, I just, you know, I couldn't put it down, especially because at the time, my husband at the time was smoking um, two packs of cigarettes a day. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to quit if someone else is, you know, just not interested in quitting at all, you know? And um, the Lord gave me this strategy and the strategy was, you know, 
uh, before I would light a cigarette, I would declare, thank you, Jesus, for showing me how disgusting this is mm -hmm. and for taking away my desire. And I did that for two weeks. And then two little church ladies prayed for me and they prayed a prayer in which they included the phrase, and may she know that every time she breathes cigarette smoke in, she's inhaling Satan. And I was like, what? And that alone was enough to like jerk me out of my little la la land. Oh, wow. But when, so what happened was though, is that when I, I like I, that was it for me, man. I wasn't gonna smoke anymore, right? But, but when I got back home, like there were times when I would kind of contemplate it and be tempted a little bit. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, the Lord showed me the strategy of saying, no, 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 greater is he, Jesus, in me than him, the one who's holding the cigarette in the world. Mm -hmm. And that just shut it down. And so, so, that, so I, I call that, you know, using the Bible to mine um, scriptural throwing stars. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you go into the Bible and you find, you know, several just one liner scriptures that you can defeat things with, yeah. it's perfect because that's just, that's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. You know, so if he had to use scripture to defeat the enemy and his temptations, then we probably do too, you know? Um, and so then the next one is um, to actually realize the truth of the scripture that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation and all things are made new. Mm -hmm. So when I look at that scripture and I'm going about my daily life and say I suddenly get angry or something, I realize, wait a minute, that's not me. Because mm. I no longer have a spirit of anger. Yeah. And so I say, well, thank you, Lord, for reminding me to pray for somebody else who's stuck with that. Mm -hmm. And then I pray for them. And then I'll say, and actually, Jesus, thank you for your promise that there's a sevenfold return mm -hmm. when the enemy comes to steal something in the night. Right. So I'm asking that you would go into the heart of the enemy camp and reveal your great love to mm -hmm. seven people who are struggling with anger, mm -hmm. that they would turn and they would know the truth and the truth would set them free. And if you start doing that stuff, the enemy can do math. Mm -hmm. He'll be like, you know what? This isn't working. Every time we poke her, like seven other people get set free. Yeah. So we need to just leave her alone. And so, you know, those, those things will end up being defeated. That's good. So, yeah. So I think that's, that's the, the ways that the Lord has kind of showed me how that can shift an atmosphere so that yeah. there's no longer any temptation in it for me. Yeah. You know, and then like, and I'm not sure, you know, say for example, like now, like when you're different places and even like in terms of atmospheres of where perhaps people are struggling with like mindsets or maybe there's a lot of negative talk. Like, have you noticed that there's ways that you've been able to use principles of transformational leadership in an environment for sure? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have actually a really great example. We were at Starbucks one day mm -hmm. and the clerk was just in, she was having a bad day. It was clear and not being nice at all to anybody. And when I got up to her, I was like, oh, hey, I am so glad to see you. You, I just, I, I want to tell you, the way that you do your job with such incredible kindness and caring for your customers just makes God's heart happy. Mm -hmm. And you could just see her, she, she was like, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Hey, thanks. And, and so... I know, that, like, I mean, I know that she had it in her. She was just having a bad day. Yeah. And so if you can focus on the nugget of gold in someone yeah. and pull it forth, then that can totally shift the atmosphere. And that's so powerful because, you know, even when people are having a bad day, maybe it's something someone said to them, you know, or something else, but I probably, you know, condemning herself or probably like, you know, saying all these things about herself and kind of having that come out, right? Because what we're thinking. Yeah. And so you being able to give her a compliment, right? Because a lot of times we might be hard on ourselves or expect other people to continue. And, you know, you totally flip that, you know, for her. And that is really amazing, you know, for her to have a new experience rather than we get mad back at her. Right, right. Yeah. That's yeah. good. All right. Have you always been a transformational leader or what made you shift if you haven't always been one? Well, like I, I have not always been, I've always been a leader. But I don't know that I've always been a transformational leader. I had, as I said, I gave um, 
Jesus my heart when I was 11, but there was no real um, support system. We didn't go to church on a regular basis. And so I kind of continued forward on my own path. And um, I would uh, tell people I cultivated an authentic testimony mm. and <laughs> uh, concerning the grace of God. Yes. Mm. And, and despite my many stumblings, um, he, he did, um, you know, he, he was always faithful. And, and he always um, kind of was waiting for me to turn back to him. When I did return to the Lord and actually finally made him the Lord of my life, that's when I actually encountered the fullness of Jesus and actually began learning all the supernatural aspects of all three members of the Godhead. Yeah. And um, ever since I kind of learned of the supernatural nature of God, mm -hmm. I, you know, there's been no turning back. It was like, I just, um, I, I want everyone to know. The things that happened was I had this crazy encounter one day and I had been reading in a book the night before and in the book, the girl's getting mugged and um, the guy's arm is across her neck and she can't breathe and she can't get her money out. And she calls on heaven and this bright white beam of light comes down from heaven mm -hmm. and it gives her the strength to fling her money and the captor, the captor lets her go and they, you know, they steal her beer and her money, mm -hmm. but she lives. But the minute I heard about the bright white beam of light from heaven, I said out loud, I want to see that. Mm -hmm. And so the next day I was driving in my car and I was going to walk my dogs out in California and I was at a stoplight and the, this bright white beam of light mm -hmm. came down from heaven, went through the roof of the top of my truck into the top of my head and filled me up to overflow with God's love. Wow. And Oh, it was, it was amazing. And the first thing I said was, wow, if no one on earth ever loves me again, it doesn't matter because God loves me. Yeah. And then I said, man, if we could just bottle this, there'd be no more war. Yeah. And then I said, until we ran out. <laughs> and, then, and then I said, you know, I really ought to see if my mom wants to come and live with me. <laughs> yeah, right? A lot of love. <laughs> and so... Now, I love my mom, but, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen on that one. But, um, but anyway, I was pretty sure that that wasn't like a regular experience. Because if it was, wouldn't people be talking about that? Right. You know? And, and so, like, now you got to realize, I come from a long line of Yankee New Englanders. And, like, our family motto was, you know, better to let them think you're an idiot than open your mouth and confirm the fact. So I didn't tell anybody about my experience because I didn't want anybody to, like, you know, um, call it into question. I didn't want anybody to steal it from me, you know. So I think that, you know, the more that we can let people know that, you know, Jesus really is alive. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, he's alive in you and me, but he's alive. You know, it's not just a case like Santa Claus, where Santa Claus is alive because parents are doing his job. Mm -hmm. It's not that. Jesus is alive. Mm -hmm. And he can help us become the person we've always wanted to be, but we had no idea of how to get there. Yeah. And when we share what he's done for us with somebody else, it gives them hope and it, it like redeems our experience. Right. And if we can share what he's shown us with others, then their starting point is kind of where we're at today and they can go and do greater things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I kind of believe that that's kind of what Jesus was talking about with his disciples when he said, you're going to do greater things. Yeah. You know, because the end of where he taught them was their starting place to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't know, but anyway, that's powerful. Yeah. You know, thinking about, um, you know, just even that transformation, you mean like that you had that again, maybe other people may have experienced, but depending on even if people, other people said it's okay, you know what I mean? Or like, they don't even realize that that was like for you, that helped you be like, wow, God's really real, right? God's love is really real. And it's almost like those encounters, you know, like from him are what shift us because it's different hearing God loves you and feeling it from him himself, you know, or knowing that who's the source of that love. And so I think that's yeah. incredible. Um, well, what, you know, uh, 
I, as you say that, something really important occurred to me also. Um, so the thing was, is that once I'd experienced God's love, the enemy knew he couldn't get me that way. Okay, he couldn't discourage me anymore along that front. But what he tried to do is he tried to slide in sideways by letting me think that, well, you know, God is love and, you know, all gods are the same and, mm. and, you know, God, God loves everyone. And, and so let me be very clear. The Bible exists for a reason. Mm. The Bible is our plumb line mm -hmm. and it tells us what God's truth is and what he likes and what he doesn't like. And if we want to be a friend of God's and we want to know him and have an intimate relationship with him, we need to read the Bible and find out what his thoughts are mm -hmm. because otherwise, you know, new age comes crashing in on you. Um, all these other um, false religions can hijack you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and really Jesus is the rock upon which we stand and he should be our foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, it's true that God loves every single one of the people whom he made. He loves everyone. It's just there's some stuff we do that he's not that keen on. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to come into agreement with his plan for our lives because he's far wiser than we are. Mm -hmm. You know, so. That's good. And then anything I know kind of goes together, but lessons or maybe perhaps mentoring people, you know, in what does that look like to mentor people in that transformational leadership? So, well, the, one of the great lessons I learned um, actually while being mentored, um, I learned that there's a lot of people who um, aren't necessarily completely confident in their own identity in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in that, their idea of leadership is a little bit skewed. And they're not thinking about leadership as Jesus led. Because mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, actually the one who's the greatest servant is going to be the greatest leader. But other people think that the more people they have serving them, the better the leader they are. Mm -hmm. And and so in order to do that, people um, put forth their own agenda. And so sometimes when you're you know, hearing from the Lord, the Lord may tell you that he wants you to do something. And that is going to run contrary mm -hmm. to what somebody else's idea is for what you should be doing. Because when you have the gift of helps, you know, quite frankly, you're a very convenient person to have around. And so if the Lord tells you that he wants you to shift to another vacation or something like that, people may not be that keen on that. And they may try to tell you that, well, that's not what I'm hearing the Lord saying for you, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I guess the thing that I really would like to get across to people is each one of us hears the Lord. He says his promises, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. So don't let people fool you into thinking that they hear better for you than you do. Because mm -hmm. that's not the way God operates. Yeah. You know, he likes to talk to each one of his children, same way we do as parents. Yeah. And so that was one really important thing. And then as far as mentoring people, um, I, you know, I just, I try to share all of the different techniques that the Holy Spirit has shown me for how to overcome things. And, you know, but I also know that in order to really be able to speak into somebody's life effectively, you have to have relationship with them. Absolutely. So that's kind of the, the key points is, you know, God wants us to get along. Yeah. God wants all of his kids to get along. You know, just like us, we don't want our kids squabbling. Right. And that's a good yeah. point. And there, and you know, there's going to be sometimes that conflict, you know, but it is like, if we have that heart of love, or sometimes we do have emotions, but it's, you know, just <clears throat> emotions, but it's learning how to, you know, talk through it and learning how to go, you know, through that together saying, okay, like, I may not, I hear you. I may not necessarily agree. You know what I mean? Like, there, it's like learning how to lovingly hear people. And, mm -hmm. love, and even if you're not in agreement, you know, you can still hear somebody and yeah. you know, in their journey but if they trust you they'll probably tell you more you know so you're, you're kind of saying like it's you know if you have somebody else and they may be willing to hear you versus you know if you have somebody that's just like comes at you and has a word but they have no relationship with you they may a be willing to hear it 
or, you know, not and completely shut down. So I think that's a really good point, you know, and again, you know, it's, it's pretty consistent for them, then they might open up, but it, it all depends. I mean, sometimes people may or may not open up at that time, depending on what's going on. Um, so I think that is important to think about. Yeah. Yep. Looking at all of this, I know we've talked about transformational leadership. Are there any books or resources or other recommendations that you have for our audience to help them? Well, for a really long time, the Lord had me focusing on reading in the New Testament, you know, getting to where I understood better um, the New Covenant, mm -hmm. the, the different ways in which the, the modern day churches there had had problems and stuff. And so he had me limited to that. And then for a while, he had me actually not reading any books by anyone else because I was working on writing some of my own books. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't want me to inadvertently share someone else's material mm -hmm. as if it was my own. At those points, some of the greatest resources I had were some of the Christian conferences I went to. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you had asked me if I actually had a copy of one of my books, and I do. Mm -hmm. and, and in it, it's like a cross of my testimony and the different strategies that the Lord gave me for getting through a very challenging season mm -hmm. of my life. And so this is the, it's uh, One Degree Twist, Recalibrating a Kingdom Compass by whoop, Edith Houghton. All right. So. So, so we have, so if you're on YouTube, you'll see the book. I will link that in the podcast for all the descriptions that what Edie had put for her book. And she does um, also have you have other books and again, it could go into that transformational leadership because she has little Sheldon behind her, which you may not see with her head, but you can share it with them about your, your book with Sheldon. Yeah. So I have a series of books called flights of fancy, which are reportedly children's books, but, um, I speak with the same vocabulary I'm speaking with you with. So they're, yeah. you know, they're not like baby books in the series. Sheldon gets caught up in a whirlwind and goes up into heaven and has an encounter with the Lord mm -hmm. and learns his value in the first one. In the second one, he feels Father God's love. And I'm just finishing up the illustrations for the third one in which Sheldon is actually suing wisdom. Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Yes. It's exactly what we're doing here. And you've, you know, in part, you've given us a lot of different strategies, you know, Edie, about transformational leadership and even just looking at it from that kingdom viewpoint. And so I appreciate those resources. I want to like, you know, again, if you have any other points, I wanted to, I always like to end our show because it's a daily dose of wisdom on, you know, a takeaway or really a wisdom tip. So we've had lots of wisdom tips, but what is one thing you want the audience to take away from this, you know, whole thought of that transformational leadership. It could be a quote, it could be something that stands out to you, a word, whatever that looks like. So I feel like if we're actually, as the body of Christ, doing our job properly, we are teaching each new Christian how to hear the voice of the Lord mm -hmm. and we'll encourage them and let them know that they do hear his voice for them mm -hmm. and for their own lives rather than letting them believe that we hear better for them. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is really important because it will protect them from being bent to someone else's agenda. Mm -hmm. And the greatest gift we can give anyone is the ability to hear the Lord. Paul says in Acts, he says, you know, of all these spiritual gifts, I think it's great if you speak in tongues, but really I would prefer that you prophesy mm -hmm. because the, the, you know, the, the speaking in tongues builds us up. Mm -hmm. But to really build up the entire body of Christ, the prophetic is necessary yeah. because the prophetic is what trains and equips and comforts. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, you know, how we can share what it is we're hearing from the Lord and everybody gets really encouraged because it turns out, what do you know? He's saying the same stuff to my friend. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And so for those in the audience, because I know there's different people. So some of you may not even know what that means, the baptism of tongues. But basically, I would just say that's a lot of times a prayer language or a love language between God and yourself. And so some sure. of you may not even know what that is. But just to clarify, you know, that's just with that relationship, that's something that God does on the journey for people. So again, I know some people out there may not know that. And so I wanted to just clarify, you know, as he was talking about that topic. 
there anything else on the topic of transformational le leadership, Edie, that you want to say or anything else to encourage the audience? Yeah, so I think one of my favorite quotes is this. Um, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to seek it out. So God says that we're a royal priesthood mm -hmm. and that we rule and reign with Christ. So it's our glory to seek out the goodness in each other mm -hmm. and to speak his love into that nugget of goodness that we can find within someone else and, and just to breathe his breath mm -hmm. on that so that they come alive. Yeah. And that's, that's just what makes life an amazing adventure. Absolutely. And I, and I think a lot of what you're talking about for transformational leadership, I heard a lot of how we speak, not just to ourselves, but how we speak to others is transforming, right? It's transformational. We have yeah. power, like you said, we can either have that death type of speak or we can speak life, right? Encourage people, look at the, those golden nuggets, right? We might know a whole bunch of stuff about the person, but what is it that we see in them, right? Or what are some great things that we can encourage them in, even when it's hard, you know, depending on relationships, but how can we think about transforming that? And that could be in any, across any environment, right? Like education, that could be across the street, like Edie was talking about being at Starbucks. Anywhere you go, you know, we have the power 24 seven to speak that life. So I really appreciate you, um, Edie, talking about that transformational leadership and how important that is. I enjoyed this transformational leadership with Edie. And again, her resources will be listed. And if you are on YouTube, like, share, and subscribe, tell a friend. And certainly you can watch this whole show again. We're going to be having that two-week series on transformational leadership. And I'll be able to look at all the resources gathered from our amazing guests. And again, you're getting your daily dose of wisdom. So thank you all. And thank you, Edie. I appreciate your time. Thank you.